Hey, driver. Oh, happy Easter, Excellency. What is it you want, Stepan? Could you drive to the Kasbik and ask General Budin to come here immediately? Isn't it too late for the church to save that master of yours? 25 francs? No, 10. On Easter night, 20. 15, Excellency. All right, Stepan. Happy Easter to you. Please, hurry. Well, leave it to me. It's very urgent, please. <laughs> Don't you adore Russian food? Faster! 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 General, I'm just mad for your place. It's always a pleasure to see you here, madame. General Bounin, my husband. Excuse me, General. The Count Beriosov is waiting outside in his taxi. He has a message for you. From Stepan? Yes, he says it is urgent. I'll be right out. Will you forgive me for just a moment? Yes, sir. Where? Over there, by the tree. Are you sure? Yes, Excellency. All right, wait here. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Anna Kory. It is Anna Kory. Or at least so you are called in the asylum at St. Cloud. You see the resemblance? No more than a hundred women might have. There's nothing to fear, I promise you. Why do you always run away? Always questions. I've lost the answers. Perhaps if you hadn't told the nun who you were, there wouldn't be any questions. Who am I? Grand Duchess Anastasia, I believe. In an asylum, a nun might be mad. It's contagious. Then you do admit you were in that asylum, don't you? Stepan, are you positive she is the same woman you saw in Saiklu? Yes, sir.
Please let me go. The general said to wait for him at the usual place. Wait? How do you like that? The nerve of that bunion. Didn't he leave us a message? Yes, he said he'd be back shortly. Late. Always late. Petrovin, the hour has arrived for me to... I tell know. You. you only tell me what you're going to tell Booney. Still, be happy now. In one week, you shall be telling it in prison. Petrovin, I forbid that word. I didn't hear it. It's the logical end to what was always a ridiculous scheme. Ridiculous scheme, eh? But your eyes lit up like those of a mad monk when you heard our Tsar's daughter might be alive. That was ridiculous. And yours lit up when you heard he had a 10 million pound inheritance. Equally ridiculous. Not equally. The 10 million pounds lie waiting in the Bank of England. But the Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna lies buried in Russia. Vodka? No, thank you. My digestion has been shocking ever since Bunin decided to form our corporation. Bunin decided. The idea was mine. My years of banking experience are for nothing. <laughs> I devised the method of selling shares to stockholders to pay for the search for their beloved Grand Duchess. I worked out the ratio of so many shares in her inheritance to so many shares of our stock. And I advised Bunin... I know. Bunin, Bunin was nothing. Bunin, Bunin was nothing. Good evening, comrades. The term doesn't grate on your white Russian ears. Huh? Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. I... The meeting is called to order. Called to order, just like that. We'll May we have the financial report, please? The financial report? Yes, the financial report. There's another report, General. All in due time, Petr Ivanovich. Go ahead, Chinov. As of today, our treasury shows assets of, uh, yeah, exactly 5,250 francs. That new suit looks very well on you, my dear Chinov. Am I wrong, or were there not some 9,000 odd francs at our last meeting? My dear General, may I ask you, may I ask you what paid for this club of yours? 15,000 francs from the stockholders, that's what. We live in one room, Petrovin and I. Two. We share the bedroom. This is not a meeting on your housing problem. Proceed with the accounts. Housing problem. <laughs> Um, 275 francs to Natalia Yakovskaya, formerly dressmaker of the Imperial family, paid for the information I received on closer measurements. I see you've made good use of the information. I drew it myself. Those are her exact measurements. Crown is a nice touch. Yeah, a face would be a better one. It's all too late now. We're facing disaster. As a son of the former deacon to His Majesty's court, you should have more faith. I wish my poor father, bless his soul, had had less. All right, Chernoff, please, give him the news. I would rather have his first. Mine? I know the smile. I bet you have another of your brilliant surprises for us. Never mind. What happened, Petrovin? Chernoff was called... I was summoned by the stockholders' committee. Oh, how kind of them. Kind, eh? <laughs> the old General Anikin came straight to the point. Years ago, he said, rumors started that the Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna, daughter of his imperial majesty, Nicholas II, had not been murdered with the rest of the royal family, but had escaped miraculously. A year ago, he went on, you and your friends came to us with the claim you knew her highness was somewhere in Berlin. Then you said you found her, but she ran away. Was it then we thought of using the redhead? No, no, the one who was always giggling. Ah, yes, the redhead came later. Go ahead. Then you said you needed more money to find her. Again, we subscribed. Then you said you found her, but she was too sick. More money. Too sick? Oh, that was Galina, too stupid. How long can she be sick, Chernov? How much money can you drain from our thin pocket, Chernov? How much have they got, Chernov? The jokers are nice, General. They give us exactly eight days. Eight days for what? Eight days to produce, Her Highness, the Grand Duchess Anastasia. Or we go to prison for fraud. For fraud? Well, it has taken them long enough. Is that all you can say? Dear, he sickens me how you let him make you suffer. How you like to suffer. And you delight in making him suffer. Not particularly. I merely thought it advisable to determine exactly what our situation was before suggesting how to deal with it. What did I tell you? All right, General. Let's have your surprise. Where is she? Where is who? The woman Stepan saw in the asylum in St. Cloud. Correct. We have finally tracked her down. Really? No. Of course, she does not admit that she was there. No. Really? Nor does she admit that she told the nun there that she was the Tsar's daughter. What does she admit? Nothing. And why do you believe I it? think she may be lying. But the important thing is that properly used, she may serve our purpose. How? She has certain surprising features. Such as? You will see. She also has a rather intriguing strangeness. Of course, that may be simply the result of amnesia. Him and his surprises. You were looking for a grand duke. He wouldn't find so many. Stepan. Bring her in. Come over here. Oh, 
Don't worry, those two gentlemen are friends. Here, sit down. How about a glass of vodka? It'll do you good. Thank you. There's nothing to fear. They merely want to examine you. Examine? Are they doctors? Or they don't help. Doctors? No, they're not doctors. No, no, we should have kept the redhead. The Tsar's daughter drinks like a Kazakh. May I have a cigarette? Sure. Yeah. Where am I? I told you, with friends. Strange. What? The resemblance to the other. Yes, both female. Have you gentlemen considered what she went through? The streets, probably. I can imagine her walk. Stand up. What did you say? Oh, 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 I said stand up. We would like to see you walk over to there, if you please. No, at least with a red head, we could have dyed her hair, but a walk. The Grand Duchess has learned with books on their heads. You could recognize them by their carriage alone. Oh. Don't walk. What's she talking about? Turn up, hmm? That bookkeeper who nearly ruined you 12 years ago in the forgery affair. Would you recognize his walk today? Would you recognize the smile of a girl you knew 10 years ago? I didn't think of that. You're both fools. You're examining her as if she was the real Anastasia. There is no Anastasia. She was shot to death 10 years ago by a firing squad. We're not looking for her, gentlemen. We're seeking only a reasonable facsimile. Reasonable, yes, but that is unreasonable. Please, let's be constructive. Besides, what will the committee say? Most of them have seen the original. How? At the court ball from a balcony? In church by candlelight, flickering shadows? Yes, you saw her. Many saw her. From a distance or in the newspaper. What about the servants? Some of them are here in exile. They saw her through devoted tears and they will again. All right, in the family. The they... family? If it was the immediate family, I would not try it. But they are dead. And do you have faith in the memories of uncles, aunts, cousins? I don't. You have faith in nothing. They will closet themselves in their bedrooms and secretly peer at yellow photographs, which that woman will resemble. That? Yes, that. Rouge will turn the mouth up a bit. Some powder, a new coiffure, dresses to suggest the other period. Walk, manner, voice, taught along with faces, names, places. <laughs> it would be easier if I could present her to the committee lying in her coffin. Yes, no questions, no answers, no mistakes. No money either. I know. Now I know. Know what? It's a cellar. You brought me down here to shoot me. Are you mad? It's a cellar. This is absurd. Sit down. No. Sit down, I said. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. A little more rehearsal, perhaps. What? He told her how the real one was shot in a cellar and instructed. Don't be stupid. I told her nothing. The woman can undoubtedly read. And certainly enough has been written describing the death in the cellar. Some say she did not die. Huh? Where did you get that? He just said so from a book or a story I was told. A rumor, a whisper. Or it, it happened. It did not. And that woman is too, uh, too something, too crazy, too clever, too tricky. I don't she... care what she is. The important thing is that she fits. Get up. Go over there. Is it? Just a drawing. Stand closer. Turn around. The correct height. The correct height. <laughs> yes. The crown might belong on her head. A drawing of whom? Who is it? A princess. A Russian Grand Duchess who died in 1918. Princess. <laughs> A glass of water. <coughs> it's all right. It's all right, Petro. Her Highness is better. Don't call me that. How well you hear. And how well you know how to use what you hear and when. It was you who told the nun that you were the Grand Duchess Anastasia. Well, sick people get sick ideas. Then you were in that asylum in St. Cloud. And before that in Berlin. Let me out of here. You know you weren't. You weren't. You weren't. And why? Why not? Questions like that can only be answered by lies. Let me go. Stop it. Let me Stop go. Stop it. No, no, please, please don't, don't. Look at her hand. What? Go on, look. Well, 
He wants us to look, all right? Come. Now, come on the delight. Sit down. Open your hands. I told you there were surprising features. On the palm of each hand, a scar. As from bullets. Now look at her head, above the left temple. A narrow depression extending almost to the forehead. Just as we were told. Where did you get those scars? A gift from an unknown admirer. Where? I don't remember. Wounds like that and you don't remember? <laughs> Who are you? No one. Or your parents? None. Where are you from? The river. Before that? A madhouse. And before that? Another river and another madhouse. Oh, come on now. Who are you? You tell me. Oh, you must be someone. Why? Nobody, nothing, no one. Incredible, but most convenient for us. All right, gentlemen, come over here. Add up the facts. One, she has a certain resemblance which we can heighten. Two, she's obviously smart enough to learn what we teach. Discrepancies in her memory can be attributed to the head wound. Three, she has no identity whatsoever, which means it would be exceedingly difficult for anyone to prove that she's someone else. Four, we have eight days. Precisely. All in favor of the candidate? Two to one elected. <laughs> Two to one elected. Do you realize there are 10 million pounds at stake? 10 million? Yes, my dear. The inheritance of 10 million pounds left by the Tsar in the Bank of England. And you want to risk it all on a mad woman. Or I must still be in the asylum with the one who sat covered and crouched on the floor because she wasn't born yet. It's you who are mad. I'll have no part of this. No, no, my dear. The carriage of the head not quite so high. Grand Duchesses are proud, but also modest. They are to be killed, not to be sold. There you are, mad as a hatter. Now she really thinks she is Anastasia. I do not, I am not. But you can be, I can make you Anastasia. She's dead, you said so yourself. That doesn't matter. Please, please, no one will believe it. The family, they call the lie. No matter what they think, they will accept you. For 10 million pounds, gladly. They would accept me and pretend to love me for money? Is that what they are like? Isn't everyone? No, I'm going. Where, to the river or the madhouse? You have no papers. The police will pick you up soon enough. If you don't die of starvation sooner. Oh, come, come. Why then did you tell those stories in the hospital? To the little nun. Her eyes grew big as a child's. But then in the evening, she brought me special things to eat. An orange or some grapes. We can bring you much more. But in another hospital, I told other stories, and they believed them too. Especially the one where the train blew up. We were too close to where the mine was planted, so when the train hit it, Pieces of metal fell like a shower of fireworks all about us. Now, the man beside me was killed, and the man beside him, too. But I was only wounded. Oh. So that's how you got those scars. Yes, so it would seem. I thought you couldn't remember. I can't always. Things come and go, like waves of mist. But look. To be hers, what you want, what we want, even what the royal family wants. So I've heard before, all of it. Say this, remember that. You are, you are not. I know you, I don't know you. Oh, I've heard it many times. Where? Bucharest, yeah. Berlin. Berlin. With China, I don't remember. But the enthusiasm and the promises, those I remember. And then when memory failed, disappointment, anger, dismissal. Out in the street, failure, fake. Nobody. There you're wrong. There will not be failure this time, not with me. Now listen. You want to know who you are, don't you? Yes. You want to find the family to whom you belong, don't you? Yes. yes. By yourself, you're lost. But with me, you will find oh, yourself. Please, you will... I, I'm tired. You know I am right. The album. Take the chance. It's the only one you have. Too tired to argue. You don't have to do anything. I will do it all. Now here, look. It's you on the deck of your father's yacht. The standard. Standard? You know the name? It's written on the lifeboat. Oh, yes. Now, here you are with your family. Your father the Tsar, your mother, your sisters, your little brother. My family. And here. 1913, the anniversary of the House of Romanovs, 300 years. There they are, on the balcony of the Winter Palace. And that little girl there, that is you. Thousands kneeling, singing, God save the Tsar. The people, your people. Yes. 
You can see it, can't you? Yes, I can. And now may I present your staff. Boris Andreevich Chernov, formerly of St. Petersburg, banker. Piotr Ivanch Petrovin, former student of the Theological Seminary. Sergei Pavlovich Bunin, general of the Czechist Regiment, former aide de camp attached to the person of His Imperial Majesty Nicholas II, Tsar of all Russia. And I am, I am Her Imperial Highness, the Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna. <laughs> Now, once more. Awakened, awakened in the middle of the night and taken down to the cellar. And then, without warning, the guards appeared in the doorway and began firing. The one fainted, shielded by the body of her sister. Which sister? Was it Olga? Right. Yes. Her white dress and darkness. One of the executioners crashed down with his rifle. Later, two brothers were among the guards that came into the cellar to remove the dead. One of the bodies moved. Her? Hidden in a farm cart on the straw, wrapped in sheets filled with snow for her fever. They fled across the country. Bribed guards with jewels sewn into her blouse. Skirt. Was it? And they made their way to? I don't know. Balta. Balta. And from there across the Romanian border to Bucharest. And there? There. There she died of heartbreak, was thrown into the sea, to the strains of an old Russian waltz. It was all quite good up to the end. This icon, you're supposed to have seen it before. Remember? Where was it? In my mother's bedroom. She was very religious and she placed holy pictures everywhere. Right. And books and albums, just like these, scattered about overflowing the tables. And there was a sitting room between the bedroom of my mother and my father. Oh, no, there was that little reading room in the hospital. Oh, how silly. More coffee. She won't sleep. She hasn't got time to sleep. I don't very much anyway, but thank you. All right. Where were we? Oh, yes. Your mother. But I know what I'm talking about. We have exactly three days left. Let us worry about one thing at a time. One thing at a time. All right, Petr Ivanch, I'll take over. I think she's very tired. Oh, I've had my coffee. Besides, it all helps to bring my memory back. And maybe one memory will convince someone, even if it's only me. Where did you live in the winter? The Winter Palace, St. Petersburg. Right. Spring? Spring? I don't remember. Sarske Silo. Sarske Silo. Summer? Peterhof. Livadia. Preferred for the sea air. Hunting seat. Spala. Where? In Poland. Petr Ivanch. And on the Baltic? No luck, no. General. The commit. In Moscow, you stayed? At the Kremlin. Sergei Palch, no. The committee will not give us even one more day. You think she's ready? No. Oh. Because she thinks she is. Now, listen, she thinks she's Anastasia. And the great Stanislavski once said, when an actor believes he is the character he's playing, fire him. It's a bit late for that. Well, it's a bit late for anything. The A days are finished. The play is finished. We are finished. The play is merely replaced by a pantomime. Huh? Our leading lady will be very weak, exhausted, too sick to talk. Right. With careful staging, the committee will be satisfied. And careful casting. Her Imperial Highness will be too weak to see any more than, let us say, six members. Why six? Three stupid enough to accept even you as Anastasia. Three important enough to spread the news that she is Anastasia. Your Highness, may I present a few members of our colony here, who, as I told you, are anxious to see you for just a moment. His Excellency Count Ilya Fyodorovich Bikhmetyev and his brother, Count Andrei Fyodorovich Bikhmetyev. His Excellency Court Assessor Shishkin. Shishkin. <laughs> Your Imperial Highness. His Excellency von Drivnitz. <coughs> it's very rude to stare. Forgive me. It's difficult to say. 
Мадам Далесянская. Come closer. No, you please. I think I know you. Were you not a lady in waiting to my mother? Many people know that, I'm afraid. I'm trying to remember more. When I was a child, I used to watch the faces of the ladies in waiting to see if they were wearing lip rouge. My mother did not allow makeup, so I... Well, I was not mean, just, just mischievous. I used to report to her. What was it my mother used to call you? Shura. Mm. Zina. I'm sorry. It escaped me. Nini. Yes, Nini. Your Highness. Your Imperial Highness. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you like my borscht? No. Too bad. The general says you have to eat it. She won't eat. All right, girl. This entire household, everything has been turned upside down just for you. To make you comfortable, to help you get well. I don't like borscht. I don't care whether you like it or not. Eat it. I specifically warned you not to say one word to that committee. You could have ruined everything. I told you about Nini, didn't I? Maybe. I don't know. Yes, I did, or Petrovin did, or you overheard us, but the important thing... Are you angry because you're beginning to wonder who I am? Or because you want me to do nothing except what you tell me? I know who you are not. Just as I know that unless you do as I tell you, I'll have an extra cigarette girl at my club. We now have a breathing spell we need badly. We still have a great deal to learn if you're to achieve what we have agreed. Do you understand? Yes, I understand, Excellency. Then finish your dinner and get to bed. Work begins again in the morning. And now... Royal etiquette. All right. One. One, two, three, four. A queen. Your majesty. A prince of royal blood. Your highness. A prince of ordinary station outside of the royal family. Prince, I suppose, so your excellency. Cabinet ministers of... But, sir, even Anna Koryev would know all of it. Pick up the book. But why do I need it? Pick up the book. Put it on your head and walk over there. You don't seem to realize that the gesture, the grace, the carriage of a true daughter of a Tsar... ...cannot be taught. Either she learns as a child how to hold herself, or it's too late, Excellency. Did she like to play as a child? No, but your mother wanted you to. I still don't like it. My hands don't have the strength anymore. All right, we can use that as an explanation. But listen to this. Now, this is important. Your tutor wanted you to learn this to prove to your mother that the lessons were not in vain. Did I ever learn it? Yes, but you hated it. I like it now. It's quite pretty. Dinner. Here we go. I can't. You will head up, back straight. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Please. Please concentrate. And one, two, three. One, two, My three. My feet hurt. I can't anymore. A little rest, perhaps. There is no time. The waltz, Dr. Lange. Come on. I'm sure you won't mind doing this. This is the waltz you like so much. The back, the back. With ease, style. Didn't you say the other day it reminded you of something? Yes, of my first ball. And your first love, no doubt. Yes. Who was he? 
I can't remember. Was he fair or was he dark with a moustache? I don't know. One day he's fair, the next he's dark. I don't know. What are you doing here? Oh, I can't anymore. I don't know who I am anymore. I don't know what I remember or what I've been told I remember. What is real? Am I? Anna. Anna. Am I Anna? Why not Tamara? Why not Lisa? Why not Tatiana? Yes, why not Tatiana? Oh, I can't anymore. I don't want this. I want to be me, whoever I am. I want to be me. I want someone to tell me, someone to accept me. Look, you have been working very hard and you're overtired. But we're almost finished now. Are you? Do you know who I am? A good night, sleep. You must know, you must. Just go to bed. No, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Stop I... it. Go to bed at once. My father was very strict. I did not like to obey, but... He was ringmaster in the circus. General Bonin. Yes? Who am I? I don't know. Your Excellency, Countess Urania Pandona and Prince Taganse. My dear madame, Her Highness and the General will be here shortly. May I thank you again for all of us for what you're doing? Oh, I should not be thanked. It makes me happy to do anything that will help restore what is right yes. for me. Yes. Oh, Excellency. Excellency, General Kavalevsky. I cannot and tell you how important your presence is here today. My dear Irina, I promised your late father I'd keep an eye on you. On occasion, it's a little trying. I promise you will not regret coming. That's a promise you may have some difficulty in keeping. May uh, I sit down? Oh, Please. This abominable couch. This way. Albert, a chair for His Excellency. Take care of His Excellency. You know how he is. Baron and Baroness Robert. The old fox himself. I never thought he would come. Well, when I wish he hadn't. Huh? How many are you taking? <coughs> People will think you're hungry. Hungry? <laughs> well, I'm not hungry. I'm nervous, sir. I'm not hungry. His Excellency Count Razumov. Xenia! Yes, sir. I must say, a truly wonderful occasion. Yes. What? Red caviar. You mean... Yes. If the caviar were real... She would be real. Vasily Dimitri, please. Remain here, Your Excellency. And Remain here. We will see that they come to you. I understand. So many of your old faces. Oh, yes. And it is their dear old names we want. Uh. We want their names and signed statements that will convince the Bank of England. Yes, yes, yes. yes but but Imperial Highness, really... the Grand Duchess Anastasia. This way, Your Highness. Just for the alcove. Stepan. My dear General, this is all so exciting. Your Imperial Highness, please. Well, Petrovanch, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I would like too to say a few much. words, She's but doing too it's much. very difficult for me to speak today. General Bunin, would you please? As you all know, I'm the last one to believe in miracles or resurrections. But reality cannot be established without help, legal help, witnessed and signed statements. It is frankly our hope, our need, that those among you who believe will come forward after the reception and sign these testimonials voluntarily. 
Now, I'm quite sure that some of you have come here to obstruct. The reasons, political, monetary, we all know. There are some who have been made understandably cynical by the revolution. And there are some who will testify to anyone and anything and have. To none of you do we bring any pressure. To all of you we bring someone who has literally suffered worse than death for 10 lost years. It is our duty to restore this extraordinary person to the world of the living. If you're sentimental, say it is because she has suffered enough. If you're humane, say justice must be done. If you're Russian, a loyal subject of his late majesty, then say with me, our only hope is his daughter, Her Imperial Highness, Anastasia Nikolaevna. Her Excellency, Countess Baranova. Your Highness, when Irina, uh, when Madame de Lysenska told me, I confess I really had doubts. You can understand. It really is a miracle. Is it? Yes, Your Highness. We met only once. I remember near the tennis courts at Livadia. Yes. I also remember that my uncle Alex got you the title because he liked dancing. But from then on, you made a fool of him. My mother never liked you. My father never liked you, and I never liked you. Please go. No, just a moment. You're not Anastasia yet. And if I have any... I said, to please go. You are mad. Don't answer. But I warn you for the last time. Your Excellency, you're not leaving without seeing Her Highness. I have seen her. Oh, but she will be so disappointed at not having seen you again. And how do you know that? Huh? You mean how do I... Well, uh... Truthfully, Excellency, we don't. But we're sure she oh, will. Well, sure, Excellency. And I, dear Ivan Vasilyevich, you stayed this long, and after all, you did promise now, me that you... don't wheedle, Irina. Oh, all right. But don't try to keep me there too long. My foot hurts. Excellency, I think you are due for a surprise. His Excellency... I'm so glad to see you, Ivan Vasilyevich. They told you my name. How kind. Won't you sit down? No, thank you. I don't expect to stay. My father's chamberlain was a man of great courtesy. His Majesty complimented me on many things. I don't recall his mentioning courtesy. My father's chamberlain was also a temperate man who did not judge before... Madam, forgive me. I have a miserable attack of gout, undoubtedly a punishment for being intemperate. And I'm eager to return to my tub of hot water. There are many characteristics which you could recall, many details, but so could dozens of others. My relations with His Majesty's children were impersonal, public. So in the end, my judgment can only be a matter of opinion, and that opinion can only be determined by resemblance and manner. Your Excellency, ten years is a long time. No, I've already noted the resemblance. As to the manner, I've been watching, and you've given me pleasure. You've taken me back to my seat, in the Imperial Theatre at St. Petersburg, second row on the aisle every Tuesday night. For the purpose of acting is not only to imitate reality, but to create illusion. I'm not being sarcastic when I say that you are an excellent actress, madame. Extremely well trained. My compliments. I do not accept them. Madam, my foot is troubling me. My life is troubling me, and it has yet to be lived. You do not believe because you do not wish to believe. You say my words will not convince because you're afraid I know the right words. You misquote, madame. I also said that the manner, the deportment of a grand duchess would convince me. But I don't see it in you. Not a gesture. The one would be worth more than all the words you undoubtedly can produce. Good day, madame. How dare you smoke in my presence without my permission? <clears throat> Who are you? Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, out of a possible fifty-one. And you were so sure it would be almost a clean sweep. Didn't the old fox himself say her performance was great art? We're not doing this for art, we're doing it for money. Now listen, this can go on forever. Some saying she is, some saying she isn't. Precisely. My mind is made up. Oh, to what? There's only one way, to go straight to the top. You mean the old icon? Yes. The Dowager Empress. Oh, sure. The old ramrod sits in her castle in Copenhagen, biting her nails because she's waiting for Sarah Bernard here to give her performance. She's the one chance. As head of the family, no one would dare dispute her word. Dispute her word. Excellency, Her Highness would like to see you. Her what? Isn't she? She can wait. Not too long. She's packing up. Packing up? Where's Her Highness going? I don't know, and it doesn't matter. 
So that you enjoyed yourself today? Yes, until I became ashamed. Ashamed of allowing myself to be put on display. Ashamed of conjuring up tricks like a circus freak. Ashamed of asking people to sign papers that I'm real. I am real. And I will not stoop to prove it to them. Who are they? Who are you? I think I know. Today and tomorrow? Will you be so sure tomorrow and the day after? Why? Why can't you let me believe? I will even help you believe when I'm sure of the truth myself. No one will ever be sure, and you least of all. I know that today, too. Wrong. These people today were not worth your efforts, but there is someone who is. One word from her and they will all grovel. The Dowager Empress Maria Fyodorovna. Grandmama. 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 She'll never see me. She will. How do you know? I know she will. Words. Call me schemer, plotter, call me what you will. But deep down you know that if anyone can get you to see that old woman, it is I. And I'll get you there for your sake. For my sake? Yes. You never did anything for the sake of anybody but yourself. You enjoy playing with people, making fools of them. That's why you're doing it, as a joke. To prove that you are great and alive and the others are small and dead. Yes, and for money. Go ahead. It won't hurt. Sit down. If you want to leave after I'm through, I won't force you to stay. Let us say you are right. As a matter of fact, you are. So that's all the more reason for you to go with me to the Empress in Copenhagen. Never trust anyone who functions from noble motives. The good are never sure, and in the end they'll let you down. Our motives are different, agreed, but our goal is the same. And that's the only thing that counts. Well, we'll go to Copenhagen. I had a dream the other night. Yes, about your father being a ringmaster. No, this time he was a doll maker. My mother, his assistant, who painted the faces. The correct ancestry for a puppet. You know I'll go. You always know. She always wore black, the Empress, didn't she? Yes. For 10 years, I've wanted to see her. She was never very easy even before the end. Yes, I know. You know or you remember? Prince Paul, let's see. Nephew to the Empress, second cousin to me, engaged to me when I was how old? 16. Quite attractive. Do you remember him? No. Well, you should. I'll tell you a secret. The first waltz you always remember it was with him. Danish customs. Have you anything to declare? No. Madame, thank you. Madame Anderson. Madame Anderson. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Bunin. Everything in order? Yes, it seems to be. Welcome to Denmark. I hope you enjoy your visit. Thank you. I'm sorry, I forgot. I've had so many names. It was a struggle to get you that one. Why Anderson? Oh, well, you needed some name. And once I was in a situation with... With a lady? Well, as an alias, it is innocuous enough. Madame A. Anderson. The least real thing about me is my legal reality. What happened to the other Madame Anderson? Oh, nothing very important. Just got tired of her? This visa is good for only 14 days. Two weeks. Most people have a lifetime in which to be accepted. Suppose two weeks are not enough. They must be. <laughs> Cavalry, we used to do it when we saw the infantry marching. Driver, 
What is this parade? Nothing special. We have it every day. The king is here in Copenhagen. Thank you. The king? Uncle Chris, cousin to Grandmama, the empress. Good. Very good. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Will you see Mrs. Anderson to her rooms, please? Yes. Excuse me. Where is the bar? That way, sir. Well, not good. Uh -uh. The Empress absolutely refuses to see you, let alone her. And him? <laughs> uh, our Prince Paul lives on the old lady's allowance. She was always rather courageous. One possibility. Remember Baroness von Liebenbaum, that crazy lady in waiting to the Empress? Mm, vaguely. She remembers you clearly. Uh, just a moment. You have a rendezvous with her tomorrow at four. Rendezvous? Yes, at the Tivoli Garden. Elena von Livenbaum. Sergei Bruni. Do sit down. Thank you. No, it's too dangerous. But I will. Dangerous, come. Whom could we possibly run into here at Tivoli except children? That's exactly why I chose it. How fit you look. Superb. But this is a striplingly small town, a village. A hundred chattering tongues will go gossiping to Her Majesty. Your lady in waiting was seen with that man. That man. <laughs> a flagon of your delicious beer. Yes. I always drink what the natives drink. Oh, this is madness without the moon. My dear Baroness, you will never change. Now you're trying to bribe me, just as the Empress said you would. Where is she? The Empress? She's playing solitaire with her memories. No, dear General Anastasia, or should I say Her Highness? Is it really she? I long to meet her. And so you shall, as soon as she is properly introduced to Copenhagen. What a look you have. How inevitable that I'm useless to you. Why? The Empress will never receive you or that woman. You know her, an unmeltable icicle. Uh, thank you. And you won't get at her through Paul, either. He sends her his bills as though they were invitations. He behaves as though we were still in Russia. Russia! I am all of Chekhov's three sisters rolled into one. I shall never get back there. Oh, surely you must have a pleasant life with the Empress here. With Her Majesty, life is one eternal glass of milk. Oh, come, there must be some court life. Not a crumb. She never entertains? Her phantoms, the ghosts of her dead family. But she must go out for a drive, for shopping, or a museum. You can never speak, whisper, breathe, one word. Well, she does go out occasionally if there's anything Russian, an opera or a ballet. Let me see. They're performing a ballet of Tchaikovsky's this week at the Royal Theatre. Thursday, I believe. <laughs> Come over here for a moment. I want you to look as beautiful as possible tonight. Oh. He's quite a simple soul, really, Prince Paul. His vocation and evocation are one and the same, the pursuit of beautiful women. If you thought it necessary, I suppose you would even have sent me to a plastic surgeon. Take your seat. Do you know how long it is since I've been to a theater? Don't display too much excitement. Sit down. They just arrived. She too? Yes.
program. Your Majesty. Box mirrors the stage. The man you want me to look beautiful for? Yes. My fiance? The lady next to him is Baroness von Liebenbaum, lady in waiting to the Empress. Where's the Empress? In the back of the box behind the curtain. So close after so many years. <laughs> Suddenly Over them to the buffet and stand facing this way. Tonight can mean. I know what tonight can mean. Go ahead. Uh, please, three coffees. Have you ever seen her before? The one with Bunin? No. Good evening, Your Highness. Oh, Bunin, we're just talking about you. Good to see you again. Thank you. When did you return? Where from? The hunting trip I was told you were on all week. Oh. My relations with my aunt forces me to be on far too many trips. I apologize. I understand. Who's the lovely lady with you? Mrs. Anderson. Extremely lovely. Yes, she's rather pretty. Anderson? Is she Danish, English? Well, she's many things. Would you like to meet her? You know very well I would. May I present His Highness Prince Paul von Heraldberg, Her Imperial Highness Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna. I should have known. Traveling under the name of Mrs. Anderson. Surprised. I wasn't sure I recognized you either. But you are sure now. Yes. I shall not ask yet whether you are. You're either very kind or very tactful. My compliments. Will you both excuse me? You are afraid. As a little boy, you always were. Is it after all such a terrible risk to have a drink with us? It seems that anything with the general is a risk, even a drink. Then have it with me. Now it is my turn. Will you both excuse me? Of course. You have changed. So have you. Then you do remember. I remember a little girl who used to delight backing me into a corner. I remember a little boy who always took time to make up his mind. For example? Ah, you're testing me? No, prodding you to talk so I can enjoy looking at you. Champagne? Why not? Uh, the Baroness von Livenbaum, please. General Boonin, kiss your please. Vasily, Her Majesty would like a glass of mineral water. You are a monster. <laughs> well, I've survived a revolution. I suppose I can survive this. Uh, will you forgive me if I make sure that Vasily gets the right kind of water? Her Majesty is madly particular. Certainly. Your Majesty. Who is it? Oh. Your Majesty, forgive me. I did once when I heard you'd been shot. I was sentenced twice. By whom? The whites or the red? As I recall, by both. Good for them. But you're still here. I have asked Your Majesty's pardon. For what? For this intrusion? For the effrontery of using the name of Romanov to launch a commercial enterprise? For hammering at my gate for days? Your Majesty. Bonin, I have already been shown two Tatianas. An Alexei and a Maria, as well as an Anastasia. I will not see your client. I am as weary of these spectral grandchildren as I am of false hope. I have lost everything I have loved. My husband, my family, my position, my country. I have nothing but memories. I want to be left alone with them. Perhaps one memory may be a reality. The only reality for you is an investment. Your Majesty, only a fool would bring you a mere investment. Whatever you may think of me, you must know that I am not a fool. I, too, have gone through the revolution and to the world. The effects of your journey are not visible. You know perfectly well this woman is not my granddaughter. Quite honestly, I don't know who she is. But there is so much that cannot be explained unless she is the woman she believes she is. 
I see now that it mattered more to you than I thought. I beg your pardon? You really wanted that title you never got. You're not doing this simply for money. You have never forgiven my family, have you? Your Majesty, I'm here simply to tell you that whoever this woman is, she asks only one thing, to see you. Unfortunately, there are not enough years remaining for me to see every mad woman with a royal obsession. If she must see me, show her my photographs again. Your Majesty, I... Go back to Paris, Bunyan. You're wasting your time. General, good evening. Your Majesty, I thought perhaps that you... Save were... your nonsense. My cape. So Bunyan is still attractive. <laughs> yes, Your Majesty. Madly attractive. Yes, Your Majesty. Maidenbaum, your voluptuous fancies are disgusting. To a woman of your age, sex should mean nothing but gender. Yes, Your Majesty. You saw her? What did she say, did she? I did not see her. What did he say? He was very charming. I like him much more than I thought I would from your description. Do you? Don't you want me to? I want you to make him like you more than he thought he would. Forgive me, Aunt Mary. I just ran into somebody else. I forgive you. You ran into a blonde. Very pretty. Is she married? And who is she? I don't know yet. Go on, you can tell me. Liebenbaum, I came for the other performance. Your Majesty. Jewels, please. Jewels? Yes, the jewels. Listen, Rage. Hmm? Will you put these in the safe downstairs? Why? They are fake. You know that, but the manager won't. Ah. <laughs> Public relations. Anything else? No. See you in the morning. Good night. Good night. You did very well tonight. Thank you. Am I dismissed now, too? Yes, you had better get some rest. Prince Paul will be calling for you tomorrow evening. Thank you for achieving the invitation. You achieved it. I merely accepted. The Empress doesn't want to see me, does she? She will see you. I'm sure she said no tonight. So now the route is through Paul via me. You don't hesitate to use anybody for anything, do you? Oh, I hesitate. I hesitate until I'm sure of the desires of those concerned. Good night. Champagne soup, and then uh, I think a fricassee of champagne. No vegetables. But a crisp champagne salad. Excellent. And for dessert? A small champagne souffle. <laughs> 1921 is a very good year for souffle. <laughs> I really don't like champagne. I only like what it does to me. <laughs> you won't like it in the morning. Mm. I'll adore it in the morning. I'll have a, a fantastically enormous hangover, and your friend Boonin will be furious. Do you know what he is? Vodka. Quick, hard, sharp. And you? Champagne, I hope. Don't be greedy. There's a little girl you used oh. to say there. Oh, no, no, not tonight. How many times have we been together? Four, five? Three. And every time... Well, every time I've heard your mind click, 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 click. Is she, isn't she, is she, is she? It's very, very unattractive of you. Very noisy. Tonight I just want to have a good time. Do you know who I am? 
No. A woman. An extremely attractive one. Then behave accordingly. Well, that's... that's difficult. And no click, click, click. Not a one. Nineteen twenty-one, definitely. Excuse me, Your Highness. I apologize for the intrusion, but Her Highness has not yet recovered from her illness. Her doctor has given strict orders that she retire early. <laughs> vodka, pure vodka. <laughs> Cinderella, the coach turned back into a pumpkin and the footman into a big white rabbit. Your Highness. Don't you think the glass slipper cut her foot? Good night, Your Highness. Oh, that ugly stepsister. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I, I, I forgot my compliments to the chef. <laughs> Well, good night, Bunin. May I speak to you for a moment? It's very late. It's very important. All right, I enjoy her company. And I agree she's a beautiful woman. With the possibility of inheriting ten million pounds. Bunin, everyone is boringly aware of my weakness and yours for beauty and money. Personally, I don't think it's so inhuman of us. Those are the two most desirable items in the world. All right, what do you propose to do? At times, you push too hard. Her visa expires in four days. If she hasn't seen the Empress by that time... You've been knocking too loudly on the door, Bunin. It is precisely when my aunt thinks that somebody is trying to force her to do something that she does nothing. When do you do something? Depends. On the odds? You're pushing again. They are high this time, my dear Prince. Very high. Good night. came from a restaurant, didn't you? Oh, that's such a funny restaurant. No food. Why don't you take me there tomorrow? You had too much to drink. No, not quite enough. Shall I call for some more? No. No. <laughs> it must be very dreary in your room. Everyone in mine is having a wonderful time. <laughs> Would you care to join us? The least of the nonsense will go to sleep. Prince Paul was asking for you twice, Your Majesty. Thank you, Pedro.
Good afternoon, Your Majesty. Did Her Majesty enjoy the drive? Yes, it was quiet for a change. Prince Paul... I heard he called twice. He's still waiting, Your Majesty. Sorry, Your Majesty, to be so persistent, but it is... Uh, Money? Much more important. Oh, a woman. Very well, come in. Well, who is she? I'll come straight to the point, Your Highness. You usually do. Is Her Majesty back? Yes. Late, dear Countess, late. Believe me, Bob, I'm in no mood for you. I had to go all the way to town on the trolley. On the trolley, my dear, why you... Oh, your bursitis again. I do not have bursitis, I have migraine. In the shoulder? Another area wouldn't surprise me as much. Living down in Nashis. Is there someone in there with her? Paul. Paul? You know he's been seen publicly with that woman. Which woman? Imposter. Prenegard, Countess. Perhaps the Empress will accept her. You mean he's going to talk her into it? She's getting old. Never. And lonely. Never. And she... Never. Leave him, Baum. Your Majesty? Do you know what he wanted? I can imagine, Your Majesty. To receive that woman. How easily he swallows the trick she performs. And what did they prove? That she can memorize the teachings of Bunin. What if there is a resemblance? What if she does think she's Anastasia? Wanting a dream does not make it true. She's a fraud. She must be. Well, isn't she? I don't know, Your Majesty. You all think I'm stubborn, don't you? I am. Very stubborn. Perhaps too stubborn. At what hotel is she staying? Believe me, I really tried. My sincere regrets. <laughs> sincere. Signed, Paul. <coughs> Miserable handwriting. You think he really saw the Empress? What's the difference whether he did or she refused or whether he didn't? The answer is the same for us. No. Hello? Yes. And who? Thank you. Baroness von Liebenbaum is on her way up with a lady. What lady? I think you'd better go inside, both of you. Lady? Do you think it did? Yes, I do. It's all in. Come. Who is on the way up? I think the Empress. She's coming here, now. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'll be able to face her. Don't be a fool. No, I'm not well enough. Must it be now, if I only could have some time. Get ready. <coughs> Your Majesty. Wait downstairs, Liebenbaum. I am deeply grateful, Your Majesty. I only hope that you will not allow your opinion of me to interfere Bring in Bring her in. Your Highness, Her Majesty is waiting. Courage. resemblance is quite good enough for a waxworks gallery. Don't you recognize me? Should I? Who are you? Where were you born? My birth certificate says South Skurselo. I was really born in Peterhof. Daughter, no doubt, to Tsar Nicholas II and Alexandra. And granddaughter to Maria Theodorovna, Dowager Empress. I have received too many appeals from resurrected Romanovs. The firing squads were such poor shots, it's amazing the revolution succeeded. Twice I started out to find you, but there were so many days, weeks, even months, when I didn't know who I was. And now you do? 
I thought I did, but if you don't know me, have I changed so much, Your Majesty? One does not change, Mademoiselle. No, not if one is loved. Perhaps if love had not been cut off so abruptly, I would not have changed so much. You are making vulgar and sentimental use of an episode which is for me a great personal sorrow. Forgive me. I forgot for a moment that you would regard that tragedy as more yours than mine. I'm trying to... You're making it very difficult for me, Grandmama. I did not give you permission to call me that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you think a lonely old woman should be eager to hear someone call her Grandmama? My loneliness has been as sharp as yours. We are most of us lonely. And it is mostly of our own making. But no masquerade of any kind can fill the emptiness. You ask me for recognition. You do it well. Your eyes are moist, your voice blurred with feeling. I believe you are lonely and you want love. Who does not? But the love you beg from me belongs to one who is dead. Are you so sure? You have won the endorsement of the sentimental, the greedy. I am none of those. So you shut me out before you even open that door. I was told you would ask me difficult questions and you were not even interested enough to ask me one. No, I am not interested in a demonstration of the tricks taught you by your business associates. But I care nothing about their business. I care nothing about the money. Ah, but you know of the inheritance. I know what they told me. I don't want money. Tell me to whom it should be given and I'll give it. Easily said, but you cannot give it away until you have it and you cannot get it without first obtaining my recognition. It's useless to say that that is not what I want. You're so hard. I remember hearing father say that in a fight you were harder than anyone in the family. I thought at the time that that was a very strong word to use, just because you and my mother were quarreling over a necklace. And some, some emeralds, yes. You wanted to keep them, though they belonged to the imperial treasure. Who told you that? Oh, there were many who could have known. You wore them with your last court dress, green and gold velvet and a long train. The photograph was unflattering but accurate. My father took my mother's side in the quarrel. There they were, all of them against you, but you were stubborn. You kept Figgy's emeralds. How did you learn to call Catherine the Great Figgy? We always called her that. Sometimes we gave the nickname to Maria because she had such an eye for the men, and, and Olga used to say... Stop! I forbid you to bandy those names. I can speak of them if I choose. They are my sisters. Imposter! You call me that. If you have any decency, end the charade at once. I will pay you. I will give you more than whatever Bunyan has promised you. I'm offering you money. Oh, please go. So, you are giving up. So it wasn't enough to have suffered the asylum, some people trying me, using me, rejecting me. And before that, the cellar and the flight. The rescue from the very edge of the grave. Years of lost memory in an asylum. Excellent material for melodrama. Long, empty days in which the consciousness of living came only through pain. Hardly melodrama. And then slowly, finally struggling up, out of the water, into the light, into the air, thinking, yes, perhaps, yes, I may be, I must be, I am, I am, and my grandmother is still alive to tell me so. My grandmother is alive to hold out her hand full of money. I rather you slap me across the face with that hand. The tragic scene of despair, well done, you're forgetting nothing, are you? I am sorry, mademoiselle, that your failure to win me over is such a cruel disappointment. Goodbye. Oh, don't go. But you just told me to. I promise I will not say anything more to try and convince you. Then what do you want of me? A moment or two longer, a moment more to be with you. To pretend you do not think what you do. To close my eyes and pretend it is years ago. A terrace in the summer sun. No, no, no. I promise, I promise I will not say names or places. The smell of the sea air, the sound of a tennis ball, the laughter from the courts beyond the trees, and your voice calling me Malinkaya. And then a sudden lightning in the summer sky. Are you ill? I was, but I'm not now. Have you seen a doctor? A good one? Oh, I'm well acquainted with doctors, but it is kind of you to ask. I'd better go. I'm really not surprised that you do not recognize me. I have changed very much. Indeed. You asked for just one moment. What is strange is that you have changed so little. It is as though the horror of all these last years has only made you strong. I am not strong, mademoiselle. Let me go. You are too clever for me. I'm an old woman. My strength is only outward. Oh, 
At least we met again. And we will another time when my mind is clearer. But no. No, we better not meet again. You have softened towards me, but later you'll regret it. You'll say it was all acting. <laughs> she was some cheap little actress they hired for money. Well, in a way, they did hire me. I was starving after I ran from the last asylum. I had nowhere to go. Unin found me on the bank of the Seine. Maybe there's more good to him than you think. Well, maybe I should have run away from him, too, but I was so tired of running. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> yes. And if it is better for you not to believe. <laughs> you are ill. No. I cough only because I'm a little frightened. It doesn't mean... <laughs> Say that again. That I cough when I'm frightened? When you were a little girl, you coughed when you were frightened. Mayan Kaya. Mayan Kaya. You have come from so far away, and I've waited so long. No, 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 no. Don't cry. There's no need to be frightened. No, no, no. Don't speak. You are safe, Anastasia. You are with me. You're home. The phantoms can go. The closed rooms can be opened. You know. I have a footman. Oh, he's a very old man. And each night he goes from one room to the other, lighting the empty lamps until the great dark rooms are a blaze of light. And perhaps that is true of all of us. We are lighting dead lamps to illumine a past that is gone. I thought you were gone. But you have come back, Anastasia. <laughs> you have come back. <laughs> but, oh, please, if it should not be you, don't ever tell me. Shops and restaurants, yes. Also, we might make a small trip to America. After all, it's the only country left with proper respect for wealth. I hate trips. I would like to go to Uruguay. Yes, why? I like the name, <laughs> Uruguay. I hate it. And Guatemala. They sound so far away. Yes, very. Why don't you chart a boat and uh, sail the high sea? I hate the sea. My dear Maxim, you are here to eat, drink, enjoy the show, and have a good time. I hate Russian food. I hate bad champing. I'm sick of the gypsies, and I'm having a terrible time. Then why don't you go home? I hate my room even more. So soon? Hey, he's back from the station. Maybe she was not on the train. Maybe. Anything wrong? Did you meet the train? She was on it? Empress Paul? Well, everything is up. Go powder your nose. How long should I take? We'll call you. Go on, go on. Well, Petr Vansh? They all arrived. Then why isn't here the hotel with her? Probably it is Copenhagen all over again. I said he should have stayed there. Stayed there. But the Empress would not let him see her highness. Or at least that's what Paul said. No, it was uh, wasting money to stay. Ligenbaum is expecting you at 10 in the morning. You mean they agree to the presentation ceremony tomorrow night? Wonderful! Then we can have the press conference at 7.30. In the grand ballroom of their hotel. Good. What about the marriage rumors? Yes. Can we announce her engagement to Paul? You know, Every time Paul is mentioned, he gets peculiar. You don't think he's getting jealous? Yes. 
I began to think back in Copenhagen. You're eating like a pig again. I'm nervous again. Where the devil did that come from? The Opera Warehouse. I think it is very impressive. Fun. Get rid of those lights. What time is it? 7.40. The press has already been waiting for. Too late to do anything about that throne. Oh, for heaven's sake, stop that nonsense. Petrovic. But they are rehearsing. They rehearse later. Please, gentlemen, please, after the press conference. I am confused. Confused. When we originally discussed the present... Stepan, tell Her Highness we're ready. Petrovin, let the press in. Did you see her? Did you talk to her? Did Chernoff, I told you 50 times. I have not seen her, nor him, nor the Empress. Perhaps if I write it very carefully in very big letters... I'm sorry. I'm bored with the whole business. The sooner it's over with, the better. You certainly have changed, Excellency, but don't get too bored. It is a little too late. This way, please. We'll find copies of the guest list and other information on this table. Yes, this is the very room in which the presentation ceremony will take place later this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I regret you cannot be present here tonight, but such is the wish of Her Imperial Majesty, the Dowager Empress. However, Her Imperial Highness, the Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna, has most graciously consented to see you for just a few moments. At 9.30, the ball will be opened by the Grand Duchess and His Highness, Prince Paul von Heraldberg. At 10.15... Is it true they're going to be married? Will the engagement be announced tonight? Well, uh, an official in off the record... At the present I... time, there is no information on that subject. Proceed. At 10.15, the Dowager Empress will make her appearance. At 10.20, the Russian National Anthem will be played and Her Majesty will formally present her granddaughter... Ladies and gentlemen, it is my humble pleasure to present Her Imperial Highness, the Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna. What a beautiful dress. Get a picture of her coming down the stairs. Peter, yeah, the flash! Oh, here. Oh, here. Oh, oh, here. Oh, here. Oh, we'll get some more in a minute. Yeah. What is it? Extraordinary taste. Can we get a picture on the throne? Her Highness has not fully recovered from her long illness, so I must request that you be as brief as possible with your questions. Your Highness, is it true that it is very difficult for you to get to see the Empress? I was three weeks in Copenhagen, almost all of which I spent with Her Majesty. Are you going to marry Prince Paul? I found the city extremely charming and hospitable. What about the inheritance, Your Highness? How do you plan to spend it? Will you get the whole ten million? If I should receive an inheritance, it will be more of a surprise to me than to you. Did you go to Romania after you escaped from Russia? Yes. Were you in a hospital in Bucharest in December 1920? Yes, I was in a hospital in Bucharest. When, I do not remember precisely. Don't you? I do. I was convalescing in the next ward when they brought you in. It is possible. Possible, but you don't remember. Well, when they discharged you, a man was waiting for you and took you home. Me. <laughs> General, I beg you, a cannot pass. Quiet. What is your name? Mikhail Vlados. Vlados. And yours is Anna Korev. Korev, Korev is, is that, that true? Yes, I have used that name. Used? Oh. The Highness has used many names. As you all know, she has been forced to hide. Also, she has suffered amnesia. Please. Mikhail Vlados. Yes, we were in the same hospital in Bucharest. They treated you for head wounds. They did. Which you got in a train explosion outside Bucharest. Is that true? Were you in a train wreck? Are you an alcoholic? What is the name of the hospital? Please, I would like you to see them. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Please. The Highness cannot hear your questions, let alone answer them. What is it you wish to know? Whether I was wounded in a train explosion on the way to Bucharest? Yes, yes. Were you? I remember being in a train explosion. Whether or not I was wounded, I do not know. Well, where did you get the wound? In Russia or in Bucharest? Is it not possible to have been wounded twice? In a war, maybe. What else is a revolution? I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, the interview is over. Oh, oh. Oh. Stepan, make sure that there are men posted at every entrance to keep the reporters from the guests. And check every invitation at the door. Yes, sir. I don't make things easier for you, do I? Was it a disaster? No matter what the papers print, before they can be on the street, the guests will be here, and the Empress will have made the presentation. Oh, forgive me, may I? You may even give me one. Thank you. The stairs aren't doing that dress any good. It doesn't matter. It will in an hour. 
I haven't seen you in a long time. And you missed me terribly. I missed you, yes. Whose orders kept you from seeing me? The Empress's or Paul's? Apparently, it has never occurred to you that I can function without orders from anyone. Then you didn't want to see me. Why? I thought it better not to. And the marriage rumors are true. You yourself told me that Paul and I were engaged years ago. Aren't you taking your royal duties a bit too seriously? Independently, you mean. The puppet has pulled the strings herself. This is childish. You've always had an obsession that people want you to do only what they tell you. No, not people. You. Nonsense. Is it? You pushed with Paul. And now you're against him. Why? Are you afraid that he's going to be in control? Over what? Over me? Over the money? I don't give a hang about the money. Well, then what is bothering you? That I might be Anna Corrin? I don't care what your name is. I care what you are. What bothers me is the way you've changed. I'm the one who's changed. Yes. When we began, you merely wanted to find out who you were. You said that was all you wanted. Yes, I What is it? No. Now you must be the Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna. Now you must be placed upon a throne before a morgue of royal corpses. Must you always hate? Must you always ridicule? Ridicule who? Your loyal, loving subjects? Those embalmed skeletons? They don't care about you. They don't care who is Anastasia, so long as they can get some money in a better position in a world that is dead and buried and should be. You didn't say that a month ago. Then you wanted it, and you wanted it for me. Well, now I like it. Go on, like it. Be a Grand Duchess. And make it really royal, and marry a man who wouldn't come within ten feet of the altar if you were not an heiress. Oh, the truth is insulting. You told me once that I was selfish and ambitious, and I admitted that you were right. Why don't you now have the courage to admit that I'm right? <laughs> Remember? What? The music, this waltz. Yes, of course. No, you don't really. Sorry, should I? No, it was a long time ago. My first waltz, my first ball, my first... What? Partner. I thought it was you. It must have been somebody else. It might have been me. It really doesn't matter. It might not even have been at the ball. Frankly, I don't understand you. Why? Because I didn't deny what Vlado said? Yes. How do you know that I'm not Anna Corey? Be serious. I am. You're deliberately behaving very strangely tonight. How do you know how Anna Corey behaves? I know how you behave, and all I care about is you. Do you mean that? Of course. Then let's announce our engagement tonight. I want to very much. Prince Paul von Harrelberg to Miss Anna Corey. Will you announce that? Certainly not. Ah. Uh, because it's not true. No? Suppose I have no title, no inheritance, nothing. I can't suppose that when I know perfectly well who you are. Still, what if I can't get the money? Or if I make no claim to it? You can and you will. Why be poor when you could so easily be very rich? The poor have only one advantage. They know when they are loved for themselves. Sorry, but I refuse to take that remark seriously. The Empress is ready. She's upstairs in the green room. Good. It's almost time. All right. Oh, Petr Ivanch, should I not be back in time? Why not? Just go ahead without me. Sergei Pavlovich, isn't this all superb? I have never seen you look so well. In this? Oh, they don't know how to make baggage nowadays. Imagine trying to fit this into a nasty little modern suitcase. Oh, the times aren't suited for elegance, but you have brought it back, so suave. What's the matter? You look upset. No, just I. Would you ask Her Majesty if she would receive me for just a moment? You know I will. General, General. You may go in. It's very kind of you. But just in case. She's heard about the reporters. Thank you. Vasily, Her Majesty, is expecting the general. I was going to send for you, Bunin. 
My granddaughter tells me to expect some unpleasantness in the newspaper. I'm afraid so, Your Majesty. Thank you. The man was probably a hired troublemaker. Well, her Highness says that actually... I am aware what she says. Unfortunately, she is not aware that truth serves only a world that lives by it. I have prepared a statement for the press that I want you to give to them before you leave tonight. I am leaving now, Your Majesty. Oh, and why? I feel that my work is finished, satisfactorily, I trust. And since this is your evening, I felt it my duty. No, that isn't quite true. I simply wanted to say goodbye to you. Extraordinary. You want to leave before the spectacle. I should have thought no one would watch it with more triumph than you. If the evening belongs to anyone, General, it is to you. We are all grateful. Thank you, Your Majesty, but I want no further part in it. Come, after all, you've performed an enormous task. You've restored my granddaughter to her rightful position. And unless I have been misinformed, you even affected her reunion with her childhood sweetheart. Yes, to a degree, I suppose I did. But you're not particularly pleased with it, are you? Your Majesty. You're not pleased. Why not? But I'm not in a position. Oh, no. come. After all, it's extremely unlike you to speak of position, Bunyan. When I am with Your Majesty, I am deeply aware of it. Thank you. Then I request you answer. If it is what Her Highness the Grand Duchess really desires, why, then I must be pleased. But for myself, no, I am not pleased. <laughs> we should not only have given you that title, we should have made you an ambassador. How deviously you have arrived at what you wanted to say. And even now you don't say it. You have not given me even a piece of string to hang you with. Sergei Pavlovich, what do you wish to ask? Why do you try to ask me? Why have you not asked her? Often what is difficult for others is simple for me. But what has always been the simplest for others is impossible for me. I made the attempt, Your Majesty. But it became translated into anger. You are less of a knave than I thought, but very much more of a fool. Yes? Excuse me, Your Majesty, it's time. So soon. Bunyan, I want you to wait for me here. This time it is a command. Will you? Yes, Your Majesty, I will. Your Majesty, I cannot wait for you to look down into the ballroom. You'll weep absolute tears. Everyone's there, and the gowns, and the uniforms. It's incredibly like it used to be. Yes, I can smell the mothballs. Your Imperial Majesty, I beg you, excuse me. If Your Majesty will permit me to explain the ceremony and to... Nibbenbaum, we discussed the ceremony this morning. <laughs> yes, but... Uh... The but we'll discuss later. Yes, Baroness. How lovely you are. Are you having a good time? Yes, Grandmama. Where is Paul? He's dancing with the Princess of Falkenburg. He dances very well. Yes, very well. And he's very handsome. Yes, he's handsome. Your Majesty, a thousand apologies. Your Majesty, it is time. If they have waited ten years, they should not mind waiting ten minutes more. Liebenbaum, I want to speak to my granddaughter alone. Out, gentlemen, out. Whereas Boonin, it is just like him to disappear when he is really needed. All right, ladies. Count. Liebenbaum. That gentleman you are so fond of, see that he does not leave the green room. Yes, Your Majesty. They are whirling in delight down there. Yes. Come here. Let me put it on for you. <laughs> you got tired of it already? It's just that I'm not used to one. It takes time. Are you sure about Paul? I like him very much. Why do you stammer? I was surprised by the suddenness of the question. If you love, the answer is always ready. I've been asked to announce your engagement tonight. Are you sure you want me to? I want to marry. Why? I suppose I want the belonging, the closeness. Am I selfish? No, but do you want all this with Paul? I think it would please you, Grandmama. And anything that would please you would please me. Do you know you are talking exactly like Bunyan? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Anastasia Nikolaevna, you don't really want to marry Paul. I don't know. You do know. Because you really want someone else. Do I? Maybe. Except that all this time, the only thing I thought I really wanted was you. 
That you already have, and it's not enough. Nor should it be. No one can blame me for living with my dear phantoms. But you, you must find the things from which other women make their happiness. S sit here for just one moment longer. <laughs> Liebenbaum says things are just as they used to be down in the ballroom. She is foolish. The world moves on, Malyunkaya, and we must move on with it or be left to molder with the past. I am the past. I like it. It's sweet and familiar. And the present is cold and foreign. In the future? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't need to concern myself with that. But you do. It's yours. Unfasten this for me, will you please? Take his emeralds? Yes, I want to give them to you. Grandmama, you have given me what no one else in the world could. Myself. Thank you. You'd better fix it yourself. Go into the green room. Liebenbaum will help you. Yes, Grandma. Hurry. There's not much time. Forgive me, Your Majesty. Yes? What is it? I thought you'd like to know that the gentleman no longer waits alone. Good. I suppose we shall have to go on with the performance. Bring in the jesters. Yes, Your Majesty. Ladies and gentlemen. Baroness. Oh, Your Majesty, I beg you. We cannot keep them waiting any longer. May we proceed now? Yes, yes, proceed. Oh, Majesty. Oh, uh, the musicians, all arranged. Good. Take your position by the curtains. Yes, sir. Hey! Straighten your tie. And you, Excellency, please don't forget all the names are loud, strong, clear. Don't worry. Oh, thank you, Excellency. Uh, ladies, get ready. Where is, uh... Where is Prince Paul? I've told you twice, he's coming. Twice, and three times you've told me you cannot find Bunyan. I also told you that he yes, says... Yes, yes, to go ahead without him. Well, I say there is something unbalanced with him tonight, and the sooner we finish... Oh, yeah, your highness. Your majesty. I've never seen you look like this before. I have never felt like this before. It is time. Petrovin, would you be so kind as to inform Her Imperial Highness, the Grand Duchess, that... We are ready. Right away. Hurry. Baroness, uh, the procedure, just to refresh your memory as to what we discussed this morning. You think my mind is failing? <laughs> Baroness. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be a, a drum roll. After that, Her Imperial Majesty, the Dowager Empress, will come forward. And when she passes through the curtains, the orchestra will strike up our national anthem. After that, the Grand Duchess is courted by gone. his highness. She has gone. gone. Gone where? What is he talking about? She's not there. I looked all over. I tell you, she has oh, gone. But this is impossible now. I mean, she must be. Silence. You have looked in the green room? Yes, Your Majesty. There is no one there. No one. Well, perhaps she went to her room. Quick, send somebody. You won't find her. It's a waste of time. They've both gone. Both? She and your friend Bunyan. Bunyan? But why? I don't understand. You never did. You mean the others were right? She was not Anastasia, after all. Wasn't she? Your Majesty, I beg you. They're all waiting down there. What shall we say to them? What can we say to them? Nothing. Pull your arm. I will speak to them. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. Everybody, please. Forgive me, Aunt Marie, but what will you say? Say? Oh, I will say, the play is over. Go home.